Jim, it's going to be interesting to watch the matchups in this game because both teams have some problems. Who is John Lucas going to guard on one end of the floor, and then who's going to take Tony Allen on the other? We'll watch that early on. Joey Graham controls the tip back to John Lucas. Here's the answer. Nelson will be on Lucas. Interesting thing will be what will happen at the other end. Bonnie Bernstein is here with us. She had a report on that just before the game. McFarland inside misses, but right back up with it. Scoring is Joey Graham. Well, we talk about that rebound differential. 8.1 rebounds differential in favor of Oklahoma State. Here you see they've got Bobbick on him at the start. Bobbick to give a little size right there and to take Lucas, who, who is guarding Carroll. It's a big size mismatch there, Billy. Yeah, but he can stay in his face and force him to put the ball on the floor. We got Bobbick on Nelson. We hear that also Weatherspoon will be coming in and also facing up against Jameer, who takes the three and first one slides off the rim. Rebound McFarland. That was a mistake by Bobbick. He cannot afford to ever leave Nelson. You gotta let the men inside prove they can score. Look inside, Bryant almost got the steal, but on the line when he had his hands on it. Oak State ball. Phil Martelli did a great job the other night with Brian and Jones, saving them into the game, both with four fouls in trouble. Masterful job of uh, substitution. Back on high with Bobbick, who came up with a couple of big threes in the second half in the win against Pitt here Thursday night. Wow, that was a triple I haven't seen in a while. Allen, though, right back inside and able to find an open. Well, there is the matchup problem that we talked about. You put a little guy on him, and he's too powerful. You put a big guy on him, it's the case of Bryant there, and he blows right by. So the Cowboys scoring with their first two possessions, and Tony Allen weaving around like he did on Thursday night, finding open seams. Allen on West. Now, here's what you could see being a problem for Oklahoma State, Jim. West is so clever the way that he plays. He always is under control. Allen is extremely aggressive. For him to get in foul trouble would change the entire complexion of this game. And I think West is capable of doing that to him. Well, he's already drawn a quick one on Tony Allen. Watch Allen. He'll put a lot of body and a lot of hands on people. Nelson back out to West. Good recovery. Behind the back. Allen has to back off the shot. Way off the mark. And Graham clears for the Cowboys. Oh, good hustle down floor for McFarland. Bobbick, open three. Tipped around McFarland, very active inside. So quick. Back out, Lucas has to take this one. That's long. Tipped around into the hands of Carroll. Lucas getting some open looks. And here's a tough situation. Lucas have a hard time stopping Nelson if Nelson takes him to the basket with that strength. Nelson's misfired on his first two attempts. And it's Lucas again. He's long. He's long twice. Great time. That's a sign, Jim, and the guy is so pumped up in the game that the energy is taking the ball long. He's just got to calm down on the inside. You see that often in a big game like this. You see there, Lucas going to stay right in and make Carroll put the ball on the floor with the dribble. There's Carroll. Like the marksman from out there, but Joey Graham already with three rebounds. Great man to man by both teams. Matchups so much fun to watch in this game because they are so critical. He just bounces it inside and nearly taken away by the National Player of the Year. Well, St. Joe's, the road to the regional final through Liberty, Texas Tech, a conference foe of Oklahoma State, beat them by five, pulling away late. It's a tight one. Won it at the wire, and then Wake Forest by four. Experience dominating in that game. And also dominant in that in that game was Tyrone Barley, who came in and did the job on Chris Paul, shutting him down. We haven't seen Barley yet, and that is soon to come, I would imagine. Changes a game the minute he comes in there. Meanwhile, the Cowboys, Billy, this has been pretty impressive. Their three games, all double-digit victories. He's from Washington. Eastern Washington, Memphis. the closest close yeah. situation where they were tied at halftime and got that uh, tongue lashing from Eddie Sutton. Down to two seconds. Got clock violation. Suffered here by the Cowboys. Good defense, St. Joe. How often do we see that, Jim? Ball knocked out of bounds, get it back in possession, less than 35 to go. College teams not doing a good job utilizing the shot clock. And their bench is at the other end, so they can't hear it being barked out from the bench that, hey, there's not that much time left when the inbounded. And Joe's has missed his first four from the field. Three and a half minutes in without scoring. Nice job by Jones getting McFarlane on his hip. 
McFarlane, yeah, he's clapping his hands because he knows he broke down defensively on that play. You've got to figure Jones and Bryant, Jim, they only take 3.3 shots a game between the two of them. So you don't worry about them having the big breakout game on you. West looking for a screen off Jones, gives it right back to oh, the yes. points of the night for the Hawks. Well, that's one of three shots that are pretty good percentage shots to take. Good job by West recognizing. Almost stolen away, and it is taken away by West. Up to oh. Nelson, and he's in for two. How about Bryant? Terrific block out on Lucas. And timeout called by Oklahoma State. Just like that, after the dunk, the steal, the basket by Nelson. We're tied early. Jim, this is what makes Jameer Nelson so good. His basketball IQ is excellent. Here he drives. He recognizes right away that Wake Forest is going to bring everybody inside. Kicks out, out to the outside. Makes it so tough. Now watch right here. He recognizes, oh, Wake Forest, you want to help out up on top? Watch me take my man one-on-one. -on -one. Dribbles, drives, penetrates, scores. Brilliant basketball player. Eddie Sutton upset about that turnover. After the full court pressure, he calls the timeout. There'll be another one coming shortly after a whistle. After a dead ball, the under 16, but his team, he wanted to straighten them out. He admonished him right away for not being able to get it up court. Beautiful move inside. That's now four on the board for Graham. Much better execution. Eddie Sutton really got in the face of his players' execution against that full court press. Allen showing us pretty nifty ball handling right there. He's got such huge hands. Floor a little slippery again. West goes down. Recovery over on the other side by Graham. Nelson step back jumper. That's a three. All through the arc of that shot. Did you notice that, Jim? Shooting over a taller player made the adjustment on the jump shot. St. Joe wanting to force tempo, get this game running a little faster pace. The press can do that. Hawks with their first lead here in the early going in New Jersey. Lucas thought about it, got a screen, and backed off. McFarlane really active, wanted yes, it, he so got strong. it, and underneath pinned and fouled. Eddie Sutton during that timeout, Billy. Well, the man's been around. Jim, he is the only coach in the history of the game that has been coach of the year in four different conferences, had taken two different teams to the Final Four. Two other guys that have been coach of the year in four different conferences, Norm Sloan, who won a national championship, and Bill Foster. A foul on John Bryant. The win, by the way, on Thursday night, gave Oklahoma State 30 wins on the season. It's the first time he's reached that mark with Oklahoma State. And in talking with them, they believe that it's the first time any coach has led a program, three different programs, to 30-win seasons. They had a 30-win season at Arkansas, 30-win season at Kentucky, and now this one, the first at Oklahoma State. Anybody questioning whether he can coach the game? <laughs> 764 times he's walked off the court with people saying he can coach. We've got one team in for San Antonio, the Yukon Huskies. Phoenix is their lucky city. They go through Phoenix. Jim, look at that number down showing you how immaterial it is, where you're seated right. or what your number is. Connecticut was a two. I don't think anybody in the country felt that with Okafer, and we understand he has a slight injury for this game, with Okafer, Connecticut has to be the team that you say has the best shot of anybody going all the way. Just like when they won it in 99, they went through Phoenix again this weekend to make it to the Final Four. And that's not blocked by Allen, a clean takeaway. Look at him push that ball up the floor, go right by West. Big skip pass, and Lucas able to snag it up there high. Holding that ball with one hand. Yeah, setting up the jumper, yes. Oh, how about that moment? Now we're talking about a very special player here. And I, I keep going back to that Rick Barnes statement. That was a tough league, the Big 12. He said nobody had an answer for Tony Allen. On the nice. drive, Step Nelson. Up. Going to be short this time, Graham. Yeah, he's rebounding much bigger than the size, 6'7". Look at him bring that ball down the floor. Brian on him. Allen, one more time, he's got the feeling, but well, off the mark. Faced down by Nelson. Oklahoma State, a team that only takes 11 threes per game. So you don't see that very often for them, looking to shoot the ball quickly from the outside. Lucas with the push off. You know, the win streak number here 
starting to dwindle as we knock off teams in the tournament. The longest current streak, Oklahoma State. And how about Xavier can and Xavier and St. Joe still alive? Can you believe Xavier, 10 and 9 at one point in the season, playing as well as anybody in the country right now? Jim, you have to wonder the four games that they had to play in four days in the tournament, and then this terrific run. I'll tell you, they had a lot of spring in their legs yesterday and looked terrific. Xavier and Duke tomorrow in the Atlanta Regional Final. Xavier, the only team to beat St. Joe's. That happened a couple of weeks ago in the A-10 first round. Witherspoon in the ball game now, and he'll be over on Nelson. Stokaitis is in, and here's Barley, number 12. Stokaitis with a big basket, his only field goal attempt of the game. Made a big one in the last minute against Wake. Sutton goes to that bench early. Allen pass. forced the turnover, and Weatherspoon, there he is for the Cowboys. First turnover committed by St. Joe. Both teams go to the bench. Barley on Lucas, and I'll tell you what, you talk about a shutdown man. Barley, the 10 defensive player of the year, and he can do it strong. He probably is athletically kind of like the Oklahoma State players. You know what, Jim? He fits right in there. Allen, fade away, front of the rim. Terrence Cuff, number for the Cowboys, too, 42. Barley outside, wing, open three. And it's Graham again. No one's taking it away from him tonight. Weatherspoon in trouble. Barley with his hands in there. So happy to block pass, hit the rim. Back out, Weatherspoon steps in, rejected. Good job by West getting a piece of that. Sloppy sequence here. One pass hit the there rim. There it is. And now this turnover. Unusual lineup out early in this ball game now for Oklahoma State. Witherspoon Crawford, not that Eddie Sutton wouldn't do this anyway, but I think it's a change. There's West with the one-hander. Left-hander, of course, he's going to go to that shot. Got some respect from Allen on that one. First points of the night for Delonte West. Here's another lob. It's Graham underneath. Stakai is trying to defend. And coming over to help Dwayne Jones. Going to be on Stakaitis. Best records. Well, we got two of the three 30-win teams here right now. St. Joe's and Oklahoma State. And of course, Gonzaga, a team that uh, St. Joe's started the season with a big victory. Joey Graham is twin. Steven has not seen minutes to this point, but will. One no, of no stranger, Billy, to playing before packed houses. Trained at a young age as Bobbitt comes back on the floor. Joey and Steven Graham, growing up out in Florida, used to perform at halftime of college games and pro games doing a globetrotter-like routine, spinning the ball, and passing it around, behind the back, etc. They got trained playing in front of packed houses, so it's a big one tonight, though, trying to take his school to the Final Four for the first time since 1995, when they, in fact, advanced right out of this building. And a win over UMass in the regional final. And a man watching very intently. He was a big part of that man from Gans, Oklahoma. Outside, Weatherspoon on the line. St. Joe's ball. Oklahoma State with a big bulge early in the rebounding department, Billy. Plus six. 11-9, though. That's the score. Timeout on the floor. We're back at Continental Airlines Arena in New Jersey, where it's nine years ago yesterday. Oklahoma State, Nettie Sutton made that move to the Final Four with a regional final victory over UMass, led by Bryant Big Country Reeves. 24 points, 10 rebounds, Billy. Man from Gans, Oklahoma, he's sitting right there, as I said, is. watching very intently. Went through Drexel, Malik Rose, Alabama with Antonio McDice, Wake Forest with Tim Duncan, and Massachusetts with Marcus Camby. Always. Pretty good center matchups there, and a terrific job on his part. Always love seeing the prominent ex-players come back and support the program. And the other night, Oklahoma State had the first game of the evening, the win over Pitt. He stayed there and watched with great intensity the second game as if he was scouting for Coach Sutton. What the, makes you think he might not have been? Probably was. <laughs> they would have liked to be out there on the floor right now. You know that. Daniel Bobbitt collects his first foul. That team went on out to Seattle and lost in the national semifinals to the eventual champion, UCLA. Jim West, a terrific free throw shooter, kind of guy you want on the line, almost shooting uh, on the year. 89%. To 
just amazes me how he has improved his shooting since the time he arrived at St. Joe to what he is right now. As you mentioned the other day, two for 17 from three in his freshman year, and look at him now. Easily breaking the pressure here. The two free throws ties the game at 11. Boy, Russ gave up a lot of room. Allen to shoot right over the top of that. And he's, look at this dipsy do. Tipped up once, twice, and batted out to Weatherspoon. You can't give Allen that much room. On the drive. Is that going to be a charge? Marley again. What a defender. Bobbitt's got to understand, you got to pull up, you got to get a defender like that, knows how to draw a charge. He's got an opening, and watch this, all the way from the weak side, terrific defensive anticipation. This is important because they had Bobbitt on Nelson, and now with two fouls, Bobbitt has to go out, that means Lucas is back in the game. He's on Marley. Taking away a lot of the kick out jump shot so far in this game is Oklahoma State. Weather spoon on Nelson inside, all tied up. Well, they say a foul. A hold is going to be the call against the Cowboys. It's going to be called on Crawford. Give Jones some credit there, Jim. Excellent hands on his part and turn what could have been a jump ball into a foul. Young man who's done a tremendous job defensively this year and sets a lot of screens on the offense. Hyde has lost it going up. Crawford comes out with it. Thought about snapping it over to Allen on the quick break. But instead, it's Lucas. And he can't control the Cowboys at this end. A little talk in there between West and Nelson to go ahead and make that switch. Made it look so easy. Look at Marley. Oh, right. Look at him right up in Allen's face. Well, let's do he it is so old. Great steal. Defense. And Allen right back with it. Lost his footing. That's only pass. Pass. And Nelson's right there to defend. Up ahead, Delonte. And yes, uses the other side of the basket to beat McFarland. Absolutely did that. Now, what's going on right now? Marley got into Allen's head. Weatherspoon underneath. And that's going to be on Stachitis. Jim, when you're a good defensive player and a great defensive player as Barley is, one of the things that I really like is the fact that not only physically do you get into a guy's, but you also get into him mentally. Now watch what he does right here. He gets so tight on him that Allen takes it as a personal challenge. And when he does, it costs him. Tries that crossover dribble, which he does well. There goes the steal. Weatherspoon at the line for two. From nearby Hamden, Delaware, not that far from St. Joe's. So, uh, one cowboy familiar with uh, Philadelphia area basketball, that's for sure. Stakaitis has to go out with the two via Odessa College, so it wasn't like a quick trip from uh, Delaware on out to Stillwater. Odessa, always a junior college powerhouse, and one more coming for Weatherspoon. Jim, we have to watch now. With Barley going to be going out there against Allen, let's see if Allen will calm down or he will mentally get into it being a personal challenge and take away from his game. Here's Nelson. Big screen here, wide open shot, front of the rim. Look at Graham again. He may be listed at 6'7", but he plays about 6'9", doesn't he? He really looks 6'9". Yeah, he plays even bigger than that. Marlon back out to Graham. He can try it outside off Nothing the mark. There. Chase down the Weatherspoon so quick. Open is Lucas. They see him. Takes the three. Too strong. He's been too strong yeah. every time. Three for three. Numbers again. Nelson on the wing. Sets up Carroll. That's blocked. We talk about defending the three. Allen got a hand on it. Well, see, there's where Carroll's going to have to use the pump fake. He's asked to realize that they're going to step right out and take away his jump shot. How often last night we saw J.J. Reddick from Duke realizing what they're going to do defensively. Take the pump fake. Take a step and then get the shot off. Lucas back out to Allen. This team's missed its last eight from the field. Make it nine. Lucas having a nightmare of a first half right here, and it's very important. He's going to get those shots. He's got to make something happen. And Carroll set up for this one. Yes, Nelson just weaving around, found him open. And that's where Nelson is so tough. He makes the penetration. He knows he can take it all the way, and so do the defenders. So they've got to collapse on him. When they do, he can kick it out. Timeout again, called by the Cowboys. St. Joe's with its largest lead, but a tight one throughout.
Five and a half minutes without a basket for the Cowboys, and Carroll hits the three for the lead. Coach Martelli doing that fabulous job with his rotations on his bench. He sits Jones down with West. And here is the man that I really think could be the defensive difference maker in this game. Barley is just so difficult to create your offense when he gets on the man that's got the ball in his hands. Five on the shot clock. Bobbitt lost the handle and double dribble. And right now, with Lucas having a shutdown game, Jim, you see no good offensive flow in the half court set by Oklahoma State. Bobbitt is certainly not the guy that's going to get that done against these guards from St. Joe. Two fouls, guarding Nelson, right here. Nelson takes the three over. Inside, oh, and Hines with the put back, just like he did on Thursday night, plus a foul. There was a Derek Wittenberg shot to huh. Lorenzo Charles. And what happens right here, because the bigger man is on Jameer Nelson, he has to change the arc of his shot, and he does. It comes up a little bit short from that range. Good job, and we saw this young man on the foul line, Jim, do that exact same thing, the big key put back against Wake Forest. You always got to break the heart of a Houston guy by bringing that up, <laughs> don't you? That was the first offensive rebound of the night, the one by Stachitis. Well, we talked about the difference in rebounding, and so far, St. Joe holding their ground right here. Oh, look at that. High off the back of the rim and goes. Here's that little full court pickup pressure, and Lucas does the right thing. Gets it away from Barley. It's a 10-2 stretch here for the Hawks. Leading by six. Double up on Steven Graham in for the first time. Takes the jumper long. Farman underneath. Good, Good people point. handle. And Stachitis getting some valuable time, valuable minutes here for St. Joe's. Look at this. Three players defending. Oh! And that's going against the Cowboys. And that shows you the strength of Nelson. Called on McFarland. Falling up, set. Jimmy, I said these two fellows may have to combine for 50 tonight. Because this game is a little bit lower scoring than I anticipated, that may be out of the question, but they are certainly delivering. Nelson. Wow, another generous roll. And a 20 to 13 lead. Delonte West back in for Barley. Barley sits down. West stays out of foul trouble, gets a little bit of a rest. Graham has to sit down. It doesn't seem to me like Oklahoma State has been able to get into a flow with their lineup on the floor. They went to the bench early, and it has never been a smooth functioning outfit. It's a 12-2 run, six for West, seven for Nelson, and they lead the Hawks by eight. St. Joe's leading by eight, and we spoke with head coach Phil Martelli about how important this game is for his program. Well, I mean, it's this, it's a stamp that they can never remove. I mean, the winner of this game goes to the Final Four, and you know what? They never can take that away from you. So this is a this is as significant a game as we've ever played in the history of St. Joe basketball. A program that's actually been to, They've been to the Final, Final Four. Four. 1961, St. Joe's went to the Final Four and defeated in the regional final Wake Forest. Right, and set all kinds of records in the consolation game. Unfortunately, they ran into Ohio State, the team that was so powerful along with Cincinnati back at that time, but they did a great job in the consolation game. And, of course, what transpired out of there was, uh, was a sad situation in regard to the Incredible gambling scandals of 1961. Point shaving scandal that involved six different schools as Weatherspoon banks at home. I mentioned Wake Forest, and we were on that team that St. Joe's defeated in this one regional final on to the Final Four. Jackie Egan, Jim Lynham, who eventually became a great coach at St. Joe. Coach Martelli just said, you know, they go to the Final Four, they can't take it away from you, but technically they did. Well, they, they did. They, they, did. Yeah. they expunged that uh, appearance. Uh, Vacated it. That was a tragic camp. situation. And the block there by McFarland as Stachitis took it to the hole, tried the left hand. Good, good hands by McFarland. Right by Nelson. Inside Allen, other side, yes. And now Lucas could get some confidence, Jim, being able to push the ball up the floor and make some things happen. He almost was picked off by Nelson. You have to be very careful. 
When Bali and Nelson are down on that floor and you try to dribble up the court, they have the ability to take it away, and Bali be coming back in here quickly. Nelson, right by with a spoon. No help by McFarland. A little late getting there. Well, the spoon just shaking his head. I'm sure he thought to do a little support system back there for him. It was nothing. Here's McFarland at this end. Oak State finding some easy baskets in the last three trips. Well, right now, St. Joe's very small with Bryant, the only guy of any size in there. Stokaitis has given him some valuable playing time here, but they are small. Stokaitis with the three, line driver, tipped around and over to Allen. Look at how Lucas is pushing this ball up the floor. He's got, oh, well, that was a tough pass, though. He's trying to bounce it in there on the run to McFarland. Jim, when you're down by four, you don't want to throw that kind of pass. You want to be solid. Make sure you folks at home vote for your starting guards on the Pontiac All-Time Tournament Team. Ask about it now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. So, yes, Barley is back in. Jones returns as well. Sits for the Cowboys. So, lacks a days of good pass by Witherspoon. I think with Barley in the game, you can't try that off. He's Allen in trouble, doubled up and taken away. That's Carroll with the theft. So any time that Allen tries to go one on one, he doesn't realize how well St. Joe's plays team defense and how well they can stop that dribble penetration. By Witherspoon again, the kick out to West. Sensational! Yeah, now that is St. Joe's basketball right there. Sensational! Nine for West, nine for Nelson. I really think Nelson has as good a basketball IQ, and I hate to keep repeating that, as anybody we have seen in a long, long time. He recognizes when you can dribble, when you can kick out, when you've got to take the jump shot. Look at that! Traveling call on Witherspoon. Got pinned. Came back down with it. See, here's what he sees. He recognizes, hey, there's a defender down in there that can block my shot. And here he comes. So guess what? I'm getting it out of there. Wes knowing I'm going to stand beyond the three-point line because my buddy and teammate knows how to get me the ball. No defense against that. And that's what's so beautiful about it. You watch West and his footwork. He saw it coming five feet before Barley or before Wes got inside, or before Nelson got inside. Bobbick is back in with the two fouls. From the corner, Carroll not hitting the shot so far. Bobbick. But that was a good shot opportunity. Exactly what Phil Martelli would like his team to have. Wide open look for Carroll. Barbick can play out there. Tipped around into the hands of Jameer. Smallest guy on the floor. Picks it off, Ian Lucas. Again, aware of where West is. Back over to Barley, wide open. The bounce pass, setting up Jones. And Allen collects his second. Nasty spill right there. Jones going to pop right back up. Good bounce pass. Good move on the, on the part of Jones to try to take it all the way, recognizing he's going to get hit by the body. Goes to finish. Nothing shy about that play. Number one shot blocker in the Atlantic 10 two years in a row. Primarily set screens, plays defense. Rebounds and block shots. Crawford comes back in along with Jason Miller, 33 for the Cowboys. And Eddie Sutton right now is rotating with that bench nowhere near as effectively as Phil Martelli is with his. Jones hits them both. That's the biggest tournament deficit so far for the entire and, tournament and at, for the Cowboys. They're down nine. And look at the press. Now, if Lucas thinks he's going to beat this with a dribble, this is not a good ball handling team on the floor right now for Oklahoma State. Banked home by Allen. But once they broke that press, if you get Allen in there, he can make things happen. Here's Nelson right back with the kick out. West over Allen. Probably not a good idea. I think West should try to take Allen on the dribble right now. He's got two fouls. And pick up that third one could be very important. Look at how uneasy Lucas is trying to dribble that ball. He realizes now and has gained a lot of respect for what Nelson, Barley, and West can do with their hands against the dribble. And with Lucas, we're talking about the media's choice as the player of the year in the Big 12. Here he is, open top of the key for just a moment. Carroll trying to defend, and Lucas is on the board. 
Mom is John, his John is, can't even get his breath. He's trying so hard. It's a lot easier to play the game than watch your son play it. And John is having a rough time. But that look of Lucas is the dad. He's oh! Times as a player. I thought that was a foul, but what a cut through on the double team. And a big hack here. Uh-oh, just Bobbick? No, I think that's, yeah, it is going to be Bobbick. If it is, it's three. It is. Look at that cut through. They try to hedge. I really thought there was a foul here. No call on the play. Fortunately for St. Joe, they get the ball back and pick up the third foul on Bobbick. So Bobbick with three and Eddie Sutton looks to his assistants, including son Sean. And the first one spins out for Barley. Now they bring in Weatherspoon. This young man, Tyrone Barley, senior from Newark, New Jersey. This is like a home game for him right here. Jim, let me give you an example of the difference of these benches. St. Joe's bench this year created 387 points, 17 percent of their points from the three-point line. For Oklahoma State, only nine points from the bench all year from three. A huge difference in Phil Martelli taking advantage of it. The lead had been nine, down to six. Two things stand out in this game summary. Three-point shots and the lack of turnovers. Absolutely. Committed by St. Joe. You can see the fact that Oklahoma State has not gotten into their half-court offense. Now here's a beautiful pick-and-roll situation, one of many that St. Joe's instituted so far in this first half. Jones sets the screen. West sees it coming. No help on that side. Goes back into Jones down there for an easy dunk. I realize that was early in the game, Jim, but throughout the course of this first half, we've seen St. Joe go against that defense where they jump out. And the last time we saw Nelson go right through the hedge man and take it right to the basket. Good Good execution. Two starters on the floor for the Cowboys. Lucas and Allen with the ball right now. And Allen better not challenge Barley with the dribble. Oh, that that's idea. a desperate pass. Good catch, Jim. Pat McGrath with an He's assist. Trying to, to take official. it away from me. Come on, Pat. What are you doing here? <laughs> Come on. You know what you have to recognize. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Singer at the half, Greg Humble, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis. We speak with Kansas head coach Bill Self, Self coming up, plus your one-on-one -on -one singular Billy Packer challenge, trivia challenge, coming up singular. Thing. Allen, yes, that one, a rainbow shot. If you're Oklahoma State, what you have got to do is to tell your guards, don't challenge full court or in a half court the defensive players from St. Joe's with your dribble. Pass the ball and get it inside. They've taken seven outside shots, seven threes. That is not their game. They only take usually 11 the whole game. Even worse, they haven't made one. That's right. But, you know, they don't count on the three-point shot as does St. Joe. St. Joe is getting them to play their game in this first half, which you're always trying to do to your opponent. Impose your game on theirs. Ten on the shot clock. Nelson. Ram defending out the Carroll. Good kick. Yes, Carroll passed up a good shot, but it comes right back to him for another try. He's got to make that shot. There's a push up that time on Jones. Cheap foul. But Jim, isn't that amazing? Great ball handling and rotation by St. Joe's. Carroll does not make the shot. You know, you can do all the things. If you can't execute the made shot, everything breaks down. You know, they have only two turnovers, the Hawks. Plus, that was only the fourth team foul. Nowhere near the bonus situation as we approach two, two minutes to go in the half. See, I think this is a good way to go ahead and break that press. Jones is not going to do anything with McFarlane. Keep it out of your guard's hands. Let McFarlane bring it up. Switch off here. Oh, Allen likes that matchup right now on Carroll. Whips it over Witherspoon. McFarlane, yes. That matchup will break down St. Joe's every time. Carroll not quick enough or strong enough to play with Allen. They brought it back to two. It was a nine-point lead. Just a few moments back for the Hawks. Eight-one span here. West steps out, now drives, fade away. Oh, he loves that fade away. Unlike Nelson, he's more accustomed, Jim, with that fadeaway jumper when he gets inside as opposed to taking it all the way. Bounce pass taken away by Jameer. Again, backcourt trying to dribble through traffic. Not a good idea. Barley lost the handle, but off McFarlane. The regional finals tomorrow, the last two 
Entries to San Antonio will be decided first in St. Louis, where Kansas plays Georgia Tech, then down in Atlanta, Xavier and Duke tomorrow on the road to the Final Four on CBS. Big key, B.J. Elder for Georgia Tech. They can ill afford to have him out of a big ball game like this. Another wide open shot. Carroll, it rattles out. Nowen's on the run. They, they uh -oh. Look at that pass by Jameer, up to Barley. A steal and a pass going the other way. Jim, I don't know what Eddie Sutton can say to his players while this half is on, but they have got to understand you cannot beat St. Joe with the dribble. They are so clever with Barley and West and Nelson taking your dribble away. Give the ball up to a big man and get in your half court set. Look at the points off turnover. 16 nothing. And I would say 90% uh, of those created by dribble situations. Lucas way out there top of the key. Nothing close. Well that pass though by Jameer Nelson after the steal. That one was a special highlight. Timeout called by St. Joe's. Watch this, going the other way. Able to snap it down court to Barley. And the Hawks are up by eight. Let's see. Back in New Jersey, Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein. Interesting to look at the school president's <laughs> father, Timothy Lannon, St. Joe's on the left. And yes, that is the school president from Oklahoma State, Dr. David Schmidley, who was wearing that outfit because Eric Eplin right here, the student, who normally wears that could not be here at the start of the game. In fact, he could not be here. He's their number one fan. He was not here, this young man, Eric Eplin, on Thursday because he was being interviewed for law school. He has never been to a Cowboy loss, home or away. So, well, the, president, the, president. <laughs> so the president stepped in and used the wardrobe on Thursday. Now he's changed back. That would have been an interesting <laughs> scene. And what's my line had you shown him with that wig on? President of the university. And here we see Holbit for the last shot. Nice time off by Phil Martelli, particularly with a ball in the hands of this young man. Operates with five to the corner. Three-point shot is off. Weatherspoon has it. And Jones goes to the locker room in front by six. Well, Billy, those two stars, Nelson and West, they have 20 of the 33 for St. Joe's. From behind the arc for the Cowboys. That includes John Lucas 0 for 5. All right, so St. Joe's with the six point lead. 20 minutes away from someone having their ticket punch for San Antonio. Who will it be? Nelson working on Bobbick, who has three fouls, and he goes right under the basket, brings it back out. West lost the handle and a turnover. Right away on the first possession of the second half. Good quick hands by Allen. One of the things you might want to think of if you're St. Joe's, Allen who gets very aggressive to go ahead and see if you can't challenge him a little bit, whoever he's guarding with the dribble, see if he'll be aggressive and pick up that third foul. Here's the key right now. Can Lucas get into this game at all, Jim? He has really had problems both shooting the ball and handling it. Nelson eyeing him. Bring it out to the top scorer in that first half. Now Bobbick with the three. Wow, that was from way out there. I didn't think he really had caught that ball properly. That was some release. It's very similar to what he did now against Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Bobbick came right out in the second half after a dry first half and hit two big threes early. A turnover on the last trip by the Hawks on the third of the night in the first in 11 minutes. West top of the key. Hands in the hands of the shortest man on the floor, Lucas. Nice job by Bobby. Lucas, somebody better bring him down. Only Graham underneath. Lucas will get some confidence if people don't stop him with the dribble. Ball is not going to take it inside quickly. Ooh, and another turnover. Timeout, Phil Martelli. My goodness, what a start. First to get Bobbick with the first three of the night for the Cowboys. I, I think that maybe the next time down the floor he comes out just to times out just to calm his club down a little bit. They match the same number of turnovers committed in the entire first half here in the early going. Two turnovers in three possessions. What an explosive drive that was. Let's get a report now from Bonnie. 
Well, Jim, of the nation's best shooting team, Eddie Sun said of his Oklahoma State squad, I don't know that I've seen some of my guys shoot as poorly as they did in the first half. He said, but our biggest flaw is our inability to take care of the basketball. He said, we're not used to 10 turnovers a game, and St. Joe's capitalized on almost all of them. He said, boys, we keep doing that. We're going back to Stillwater. And they come out blazing here in the second half. A foul was on Carroll a moment ago, his first. Work it back inside the Graham, That's, and he was pushing off. That, that was an offensive foul. Graham so strong with the upper body, uses that arm sometimes, and Carroll did a wise thing. As soon as he felt the contact, he dropped back. That's a second on Joey Graham. We've got two on Graham, two on Allen, three on Bobby. No foul worries on the other side. Allen talking to Graham out there. Graham said, hey, you better go back and pick up that man in your garden. Don't talk to me. And Allen realizes it's rest. You better get there. Jones working it, working it. Tough shot. Oh, and the loose ball picked up now by McFarland. What's he going to do with it on the dribble? He's going to whip it over here to Lucas. Jumper back of the rim. Just cannot get anything to fall as Lucas. Nelson with the big lob. On underneath, but took it back out to Carroll. In there. On and out. Pull back down by McFarland. Carroll now one for seven from three. Well, that shot looked good, Jimmy. You're right on the angle with it. It was an excellent release. Didn't go. And Joe shooting well, much poorer than they'd like to from the three-point line. Cowboys looking for their first lead since 11-10. Take it with the basket here. It's Lucas. There you go. John Lucas with the three. Will Phil Martelli get that timeout now? I think he needs to change the pace of this game. He's standing up there, but he's letting his team go. Kind of surprised me a little bit. Eight nothing to start the second half. You notice that when Bryant steps out, nobody worries about him. Great backdoor cut. And Nelson finishes. Boy, that's when you've got confidence in your club. It's come out very slowly. That's Nelson's first basket in about 10 minutes on the clock. That ties it at 35. Always looking like he wants to work something inside, oh, and he good. does to Joey Grant. Beautiful assist. Great recognition between those two players right there, Jim. Allen, he's under control with that great power. And you know, Graham has had some hands, doesn't he, when he catches that ball. It's so powerful. Carroll, again, long. Bryant saves it, though. Nelson up high off the window and pulled back down by Graham with those strong hands. He really does. He grabs that ball with two hands and it's all his. Ball and trying to get Lucas free with some outside screens. That was a lot. Bad play. And he was trying to find McFarland. 37-35. You don't want to make this spectacular play at this point if you're Oklahoma State. Stay solid. Eddie Sutton immediately calls on Weatherspoon to go check in. Some traffic caught underneath the basket. No place to go. Where those hands again by Grant. Lucas signals. Come on, let's move it up. Let's move it quick. Fade away, Lucas. You know, he's made two of the fadeaway jump shots in this ball game, but has not made the straight in looks. And there's the timeout call by St. Joe's. They weren't going to wait for the next dead ball, which would have automatically brought one. Jim, I thought it should have come a little earlier. They had the momentum back. Settle things down. 12-2 to start the second half for Oak State. UConn is in the Final Four. This is the second piece of the puzzle. And interestingly, the winner of this game will not play UConn next week in the semifinals. Instead, we'll play the winner of Georgia Tech, Kansas. Comes your way tomorrow on CBS. Jim, we have seen two different philosophies here in regard to defense. St. Joe in the first half did a great job with full court pressure. You can see here Oklahoma State not wanting any part of full court pressure to go up against Nelson. They wait for him in a half court set. Even with this 12-2 Cowboy run to begin the second half, Barley is not brought in. The super sub still sits with West with his own fadeaway. And unlucky with the roll that time, McFarland has it for the Cowboys. Graham, on up jump. Oh, yes. nice shot. Graham, does he seem focused, Jim, or not in this second half? You know, he can not only control the boards, but he can get on an offensive spurt you wouldn't believe. West, that one's blocked by McFarlane. No, they say he got a piece of the hand. Second time today, McFarlane picked up a foul where he thought he had a pretty good defensive chance for the block. And that's three on McFarlane. You remember when it, early in the first half when Nelson made that drive down the lane, McFarlane picked up that foul. 
talking about Joey Graham a moment ago, scoring at the other end. He now has a double-double tonight, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Well, he had a 36-point game against Nebraska, the most ever scored in the Ivo Arena, with the exception of the 58 Bob Curl scored way back in 1946, so that record still standing. Titus coming in for Carroll and Barley in for Bryant. Let's see what Barley can do. He has been the man in my estimation that has been the key in this tournament to change things around for St. Joe. Can he do it again? The free throws by Delonte West. Oklahoma State's hit six of its first eight in this half to take the lead. And the Hawk. And meanwhile, you remember that lob pass young John Lucas tried to attempt? <laughs> Look at his dad. You know, for every father, and Jim, we've been there, you get in a game like this, you anguish so much, and I hope that John is not looking at his father, John, because you can't get involved, but, but his father is dying right here now. It is so much easier to play the game than to watch your son play it. But he was giving him some pretty good advice. Stay away from that lob pass, get back to the dribble and shoot and get a good release on your jump shot. So it was all good advice. It's tough for a young man to have to listen. And here's the young man, and that's knocked away. Where's the dad? Great point guard at Maryland 30 years ago, and he had his own agonizing moments oh boy. in postseason play. Back then, you could only get one team in from the conference, and they had that storied overtime ACC final game against NC State. And there, a double up, and yes, it's no nope, oh. timeout. Oh, I thought I thought he went there. out of bounds with so did I. those strong hands allowed Graham to get the timeout. Timeout Oak State. In 34 years as a head coach, Eddie Sutton, only Dean Smith more wins after 34 years on the bench. 764 W's. And looking for his third Final Four. 1978 Arkansas, 95. Oklahoma State, his home school. Here we go with six seconds on the shot clock. Allen with the three. Dipped up by Graham, battling for it. it alive. Nice hustle there by Jones. Nelson tough in this position. Spin move and look over. Oh, 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 oh. up there trying to influence that shot. That was McFarland about, what would you say, a foot above the board there? He had company. Allen got the fake on Stachitis. And this will be a foul on St. Joe's. We're seeing some men step up here, Jim, in this second half. Dwayne Jones on the foul. And whether you're looking for live scores and updated brackets from each game or game centers with in-depth play-by-play, you can find it all. CBSSportsLine.com. Inbounds pass, Lucas. Bank shot, yes. Surprise Nelson by breaking to the basket that time. Got a good open look. Lucas now starting to pick up some confidence in the second half. Yeah, is, is he ever, Billy? Seven points in the half, nine for the game. Maybe he has been watching his father. Wide open. Nelson. Big hit. And considering how they had struggled from the floor in this half before that one. You can see what Oklahoma State is now doing for Lucas. They're setting a big screen to try to break that defender so he can't go ahead and play in man-to-man. -man. Smart move by Eddie Sutton. Yeah, how big that shot was. They've made only one of their first ten in this half before the three by Jameer. Lucas. A little bit of a line drive. They've got a fast break opportunity. Are they going to take it? Here comes West. My boys get back in a hurry. Three-point lead for Oklahoma State. Seems like everything changes when Barley comes in the game, doesn't it? They seem to be... Much more composed, they get better shots, better looks. And obviously stronger defense. And better leadership. There's a nine three by Delonte West. He just changes this game around. The defender all over Lucas right here. That's his nickname around Hawk Hill. And West is saying to Allen, go ahead, put up the jump shot. Joey Graham and Stapitis out high with the foul. So back-to-back -back threes by St. Joe's for a six-point run. Bring Bobbitt back in along with Crawford. Jim, it really is interesting in regard to three-point shooting. St. Joe's shoots 40% from three. And you have a team, Oklahoma State, that holds opponents to 30%. So something has to give. 
And so far, they're five out of 19. So Oklahoma State's got the percentage battle going. Bobic never had a clean handle. Instead, sets up Lucas. Ooh, what a rebound. Look at that. Fighting inside with Crawford falling to the floor and a foul against St. Joe's. That's again against Dwayne Jones. That's his third. Well, when Eddie Sutton went to the bench in the first half, things kind of got out of focus for their team. Now Crawford comes in and does a couple of solid things. Bryant's going to come in for Jones now that they, they don't get him in, in time. He raced to check in, but did not get there in time. And Graham again, using those hands to push the defender away. He got hit on the arm by Stokotis. No question. That is just not big enough or strong enough to guard him. Three on Stokinas. Sunday night's lineup tomorrow night in America's number one network. It all begins with number one news magazine, 60 Minutes, then Cold Case, and the CBS Sunday movie. Jesus, all here Sunday on CBS America's most watched network. Graham at the line for two. Best newcomer in the Big 12 this year. Jim, there's something interesting about this team. In the first 15 games of the year, they shot only 63% from the foul line. Since then, 73%. Terrific improvement, and obviously has a lot to do with the terrific run they've had. Julie Graham has tied his career high in this game with 10 rebounds. And gets the second to go. One point lead, Oklahoma State. Lucas trying to defend. West, tough shot. All Cowboys underneath. Lucas races up. In the lane, it's Rand. Oh, what a feed, Lucas. Wow, and that will be a foul on Brian as well. Terrific job by Lucas to spot him. Here's where hustle counts, and we right, see right now Graham. As I said, the men are now coming to play. Terrific job on his part. Just too strong, too big, and can really elevate. And draws the third foul on Bryant. So Joey Graham having a huge night here for OSU. Three-point play and a four-point lead as they head to the benches. What a different team we're seeing this half. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein, Jameer, and Delante. They huddled with the coach, came out of the huddle, and then Jameer brought the teams over, the rest of the team over, put his arms around him, and had his own word or two for the rest of the team. Well, terrific senior leadership on that young man. Up to come back to this team and has been the leader all year long. So that's not too surprising. Three Hawks with three fouls, the Titus, Jones, and Bryant. And Jones is having to sit. Barley in traffic, and Bryant fed by Barley. A little difference with McFarlane out of the game, Jim, with a little foul trouble. He would have been there for that play. Ooh, what a tough matchup right here. Elbow to the chin of Nelson. Yep. Graham was trying to free himself, and a hold called on Jameer. Thursday on a new Survivor, the All-Stars think it's time for a merge, but what they get is a bizarre twist that will shake up the game, and you'll see it Thursday at 8, 7 Central. America's most watched network, Survivor, back to its usual time. That's the seventh team foul, so we're in the one and one for Oklahoma State. Jim, Nelson very seldom finds a guy that he goes up against that he isn't as strong physically as, and there was the, one of the few times that that would happen to him. That's why Graham was on that line. Whistle before the shot. It's going to be fighting through the screen. Bryant set a decent screen, gets fouled. And it's called on Graham as we look at some of his big moments in this game. Graham with a double-double, 15 points, 10 rebounds. He just picked up his third foul for the Cowboys, and that's the third team foul. This is very big, but falling in can do the job defensively, but Graham was just getting in sync on the offensive end. Nice job by Nelson, realizing the cut was not there by West. Look at Allen out high on West. I think West ought to try to take him to pick up some fouls. Allen plays so aggressively against that dribble. 
Nelson trying to free himself for the shot. What a beautiful tray that one was. And not, not only, Jim, a great shot there, but it was good, against good defense. Bobic held his ground against all of that, and he still got it off. 17 for Jameer Nelson. Boy, they are really getting tight. On both ends. Yep. As we approach the midway point of the second half, and St. Joe's has regained the lead. Three-point shooting, so important for this club. Eight on the shot clock, Lucas in the lane, floater, front of the rim, tipped up by McFarland. No, it was uh, Allen. And a new 35 for Oklahoma State. I think Lucas was surprised he was that wide open on the drive. He loves to survey. Now comes in, hits the shot. Did a great, great job, Jim, pulling up on that shot. Rather than going any one dribble further, he draws the charge. Smart play. Only Allen with 12. And we have our sixth lead change. Wanting to drive. Nelson back out high. Brian will give it up quickly. To Titus, to West. Bounce pass, a beauty, and finished up by Brian. Just great ball handling on the interior. Brian hanging around, takes advantage. Back and forth we go. St. Joe's 50, Oklahoma State 49. Nelson got away with a foul that time. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to pick anything cheap. They've got to keep him in the game. Both teams' defense is excellent on the ball. And this bar is hard to shake. And Lucas knows it. Yep, he can't even get the offense initiated. Seven on the shot clock. Lucas now open from the corner and hits the three. Well, you had to double team Allen the way he's been showing he can penetrate inside. Dr. Schmidley, the school president, on his feet cheering it on. Lucas with 12 on the game, 10 coming here in the second half. What a nice movement here by St. Joe, trying to free up one of the two guards out here, Nelson or Rest. Loose ball, picked up by Allen. Over to Crawford, Lucas snaps it ahead. It's McFarlane on the run, and the Cowboys score again. And a foul on the play. No way to stop a man who's a great finisher like that. You might as well let him take the shot. Some credit to Allen, to Crawford, to Lucas, to McFarlane. Four Cowboys touched it after the steal. Now, Jim, you've got to let a man like this go ahead and take that shot. Graham coming back in. Allen going to take a little breather right here. The foul was on Barley, his second. As McFarland's moving in on a double-double. Eight points, nine rebounds. Chance to go up five. Another product out of Willow Ridge High School in Missouri City, Texas. Well, Played with the likes of T.J. Ford, Daniel Ewing, Taylor of Texas. And he started this tournament with a double. 20 and 10 against Eastern Washington. He's picking right up from there. Lucas, that big three. Cowboys up by five. You know, I want to talk about the St. Joe's flap, and I'm not talking about the Hawk. I'm going to go back to the selection show when I asked you about St. Joe's being a number one seed. And you felt that Oklahoma State deserved to be a one. Absolutely. And really, if you talk about but what St. Joe's a five, you know, the five on the, on the second line. The selection so. committee later told us that the Big 12 tournament final, which Oklahoma State won, finished too late to be factored in. They ended up ranking, because this is the first year they announced it, St. Joe's was their fourth overall seed in the, in the tournament. Oklahoma State was a five. It was almost so fine I mean, line. such look, a fine line. And look at what this game is, Jim, a very fine line. Regardless of who wins this, you could say both of these teams could make, it, make their case. But everybody should have an opinion, and obviously the people of Philadelphia had theirs, and it wasn't an agreement of mine. But what's great about the NCAA tournament, and for this coach as well as any coach, you have to win it on the floor. But it's not like it, you know, they, were, they were talking about a, a, a difference here. We're talking about well, the fourth a, overall team it was a and gut, the fifth. Yeah, and in fairness and the, to the committee, it was a gut check. You sure, know? and the Cowboys win, and the Big 12 did not have a chance to be factored in. It was too late. And here these two are dueling to the end for a ticket to San Antonio. 
With seven and a half to play, and the Cowboys leading by five. Nelson, beautiful move. Not enough English on that one. Comes back into the hands of McFarlane. And see, Nelson would make that steal normally. McFarlane is so strong, and Graham so strong inside, they just can hang on to it. Powerful hands. Graham is on the floor with four fouls. Fourth foul coming. 738 mark. Here's Allen. Found on the seat. Oh, and West that time Nelson able. gets it. Yeah, well, West kind of forced it. He's up ahead on the run, and it's down to three. Allen was still down on the floor. I thought he was hurt there. Good job, Nelson, showing the hands that he's got. Almost walking that time on Witherspoon. Probably did walk. No call. Lucas having a huge oh. second half. Not this know, time. I don't know about that shot. And here's the breakaway. It's up to West again. Lucas got a hand in there, and it's last touch by Allen. St. Joe's ball. Jim, because they've been so successful at this, St. Joe's has with Nelson throwing that ball down there. He takes the chance, even though being down by three points, pretty good chance on his part. Oklahoma State has only one timeout remaining. We'll be right back. That's why you play, and that's why different assets that each club has have made this game so tight. OSU has committed only three turnovers in this half, after 10 in the first. Leading to all those uh, points you mentioned, Billy, off turnovers. Here's that play where they like to clear out on the weak side. No help for Witherspoon. He's got to recognize that. Here's Barley. Give up pass here. Jones, yes. Down the one. Well, what Eddie Sutton is trying to do, and I don't know how long he can keep Graham out of this ball game. Down to six minutes now, one-point game. And the man that's been the difference in this second half is sitting on the bench. Under six minutes to play and a one-point lead for LSU. Lucas is handling it for a long time, looking for help, now looking for the shot. Oh, look at Allen. Oh, and he says off of Allen. Wait a minute, that ball. It looked like the two Yeah, players. I think the ball hit right off West back. Let's see this one right here. Shot goes up. Lucas gets the good look. Yeah, there's no question. That ball hit St. Joe's in the back. Right there. The ball is touched by West. Big break for St. Joe. St. Joe can take the lead here. Down five just a moment ago. West with the three. Too strong. Tipped out of bounds by McFarland. Hmm. How long will Eddie Sutton go with Graham sitting on a bench? Down to 520. He's got two starters on the bench. He can bring Bobbitt back in, but Graham has been sitting for over two minutes. Carroll, three-point shot. Tipped around, batted around into the hands of McFarland. This game really getting tense, Jim. You can feel it. Yeah, you really can. Both of these teams realizing they are five minutes away from going to something every kid dreams of, a Final Four. Great crossover dribble. A lot of intensity in this building. Here's Lucas. On the arm. And he'll go to the line. That was He's Carroll on the arm. Good free throw shooter. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And remember, you can get complete tournament coverage. CBSSportsLine.com. Second half turnovers that cut down on them. By a wide margin, the Cowboys. Lucas has really stepped up in this second half. Shooting two at 89% free throw shooter. Young man who had all kinds of problems in the first half with his assist turnover ratio and kind of surprising because on the year he was almost two and a half to one. But the defensive makeup of St. Joe's caused him all kinds of problems in the first half. Transfer from Baylor. Big 12 Conference waived the transfer rule, able to play right away. Said that he loved Coach Sutton the last two years, and I didn't even play for him. I didn't realize till the other day that Brandon Knight tried to recruit him to get him to come to Pitt and take his spot, but he wanted to stay in the same league. Bring in Bobbick. Lucas will get a breather. Well, we may be seeing a little offense-defense substitution right now. Bobbick going on. Nelson frees up uh, Lucas. Stay out of foul trouble, get a little breather, and maybe make this team a little better defensively. He won't be down for long. Here's Nelson working on Bobbitt. 
Barley on the drive. Cut shot, there. tipped around. Look at Nelson find the spot. Skip pass, Carroll. Three-point shot. Oh, this has tied the game at 57. How about that heads-up play by Nelson? He gets it in the deep corner, has the presence of mind to know where everybody is. Including Carroll on the other side of the Absolutely. court. Absolutely. He really is heads up. Carroll's second three of the night. That was a sensational play. Four minutes to go. Our seventh tie of this regional final. Oh, there's good body strength by Nelson. Weatherspoon in with the jump in there, and it's rejected. I believe Eddie Sutton has got to come back with his starting team. He's got to go ahead and get Graham back in the game. Lucas is going to come back in. Going with Lucas, but Graham still sits with the four fouls. Now down for four minutes. Yeah, I think with 3.40 to go, Jim, time for him to come back in there. They were up five when he sat. Now he's been asked to, to check in, so he'll be coming in next whistle. Step in, jumper. There it is. Yes, in the lead. Jumper, terrific job by West. Hawks 59, Cowboys 57. Bobbitt driving on Nelson. And Jameer called for that one. Just his second. Probably not a wise foul by Nelson right there because where was Bobbitt going to go, Jim? That would have been a very difficult shot. One team is already in for the Alamo City, and that's the Connecticut Huskies with a very impressive, overwhelming performance for Alabama today. Too much for the Crimson Tide, down 24 at halftime. 36 points for Ben Gordon. Double bonus. Nothing here. This team, Oklahoma State, this year, 7-0 against teams in the top 25. And here comes Graham back into the ball game. Sat down a long time. And Lucas back in. Back the entire time Graham set, they did not make a basket from the field. Four and a half minutes. That was a calculated move by Eddie Sutton. Misses a pair. Ball goes out of bounds. Tough break for St. Joe. Big break for Oklahoma State. It'll be Oklahoma State ball when we come back. Carroll hit the tying three. They're up two now. One timeout for the Cowboys. And we talk about this tension, Billy, this St. Joe's school. Feeling like the David of the NCAA tournament, the little guy looking for respect in Oklahoma State, a program that faced a tremendous tragedy just three years ago. And Trying to take the program back to the Final Four. Inside, it's Graham. Weaving his way out of there, and oh. yes, What a move by Joey Graham. Almost to three seconds, but he is so strong inside, surrounded by three people, and still got the shot off. You can see how important he was those five minutes he sat down, Jim. Changed the complexion of the offense for Oklahoma State. Tied at 59, inside three minutes. And heading to the line for two is Dwayne Jones. McFarlane on the foul. Just so strong. Three men surrounded him earlier, then two. Wheels around, comes back inside, and even with the shot blocker of the Atlantic 10, Jones there, he still gets it off. Well, you saw the power, and then you saw the finesse right here. That was the fourth foul on McFarland at the other end. Jones, not a good free throw shooter. 45%. So, barely raised rim. Here's the situation, Jim, when you've got a 45% free throw shooter on the line and you're St. Joe's, you've got to be thinking about a miss here. Do everything you can to maybe get one right in the paint. Two okay. get away from Yep. Cowboys now trying to break that tie at 245. Lucas gets the switch. Allen lost the dribble going in, but got it back. Calls time. That's the last time out. Well, he had the arrow. It was not a good one to call, Jim. He would have gotten the ball back possession-wise anyway. Eddie Sutton's team, though, will talk it over. They'll have the ball when we come back. How large is that handicap, Billy? No timeouts for the Cowboys. Jim, I think it's very, very important. And you've got to, as a player, recognize the fact of which way the arrow goes. I know you have a lot in your mind, but it's extremely important. Graham hits the floor. He realize, uh, Allen hits the floor. He has to realize that, hey, we've got possession of this ball. Let's save that last timeout. Could be very, very important. What are you looking for right here for Oklahoma State with this possession? Well, I think that right now it's the Graham-Allen show. If you're Oklahoma State, you ought to make 
St. Joe have to stop one of those two and see if there's something else there. Inbounds pass, really important here because Barley is in the game. He's got good anticipation. And it's going to be Barley on Graham. Allen has only two points in this second half. He's their top scorer. Inside, pinned underneath. McFarland had it knocked away, and the Hawks have the possession with the game tied. Nice job by Jones to pin him on the baseline. Nelson had an open look for a moment. So what's interesting to watch Nelson's eyes, he sees all nine other guys on the floor when he's dribbling. He never has to concern himself about his own play. That's why he can make so many great plays. Two minutes to go. Under 10 on the shot clock. Nelson. And there's Allen with the sweep for OSU. Nelson got hit right in the thigh in that play. He's holding his thigh. Looks like he's in a little bit of pain right now. Lucas comes off the screen. Wow, what a shot at that time to take. It was a line drive, too, Billy. Yeah, I, I don't think if you're Oklahoma State, you want to come down the floor without giving Graham an opportunity to have the ball. Timeout called by Phil Martelli. St. Joe's with 131 remaining. Will inbound with the game tied and a ticket to San Antonio on the line. You see something here, Billy, that stands out? Yeah, it really does. We talked about the zero timeouts, but here a foul to give, which can be very, very helpful if you're Oklahoma State, particularly the way that Nelson handles the ball in these key situations. If he's beaten you, you can get the foul on that dribble and make him take that ball to the sideline. 25 seconds on the shot clock. And I really think that if you are Oklahoma State, when you get the ball, you have got to give Joey Graham an opportunity to touch it down inside. This game is exactly what it should have been. A number one against a number two. That was a foul. No call. No, that was a call. There was a yep. whistle outside, Billy. And let's see. This was. That's West. You have a foul to give, though. Nobody will go to the line. That, that was Allen on the outside with West. 35 second on there. And that's the 16 foul, the third on Allen. And Nelson uh, lost his dribble, yeah. almost a double dribble. I think it was a double dribble. Hit his leg, then he recovered, dribbled again. He heard some groans from the OSU section. 109 to go. Trying to get any edge you can as a fan right now. Good one. Shot blocked and picked up by Joey Graham. Now, I will be shocked now if Graham does not get at least a chance to touch the ball. Under a minute to play. Both teams looking very tight right now. Allen, wow. on West, no call. Kicks it way out. Lucas, Barley converges on him. Fadeaway jumper, he got it! You know what, Five West... to go and they lead by two. West and Lucas both have been, I think, 100%, Jim, on fadeaway jumpers tonight. A tenth lead change. 61 59. Another one. Yes, it's Carroll for the lead. The hedge move. Why would you leave Carroll? You know Nelson can find him. 25 seconds. Down one. They have no timeouts. And taking too much time here is Oklahoma State. 15 Let's... seconds to go for the final four. Graham out high. He lost control, kicks it out. Lucas is shot. Yes! Three-pointer, seven seconds left. Two-point lead. Here comes Nelson. He's got the ball. You know he'll take it. No timeout. They're not going to take it. Lucas, no, but defending, and yes, rebound to Lucas. Oklahoma State's going to the final four. Jim, everything the game should have been. Two outstanding teams. Heartbreak Hill, not Hawk Hill for St. Joe, but two great teams playing outstanding basketball. How about the shot Lucas hit for the winner?